Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the UK Stroke Assembly live and in your homes. My name is Tony Banks, Head of Conference and Events at the Stroke Association, and I'm also a really proud chair of the UK Stroke Assembly. We're into week five of our virtual webinar series now. You can catch up on everything we've done so far at stroke.org.uk forward slash UKSA virtual. Last week, we focused on our support that we provide to you, the stroke community. There were four sessions in total. You can watch them all on the website now. And this week, we're talking about staying connected. Really important topic this week as we continue to work our way through the coronavirus crisis and we aren't able to meet face to face. And actually, we should have been meeting face to face at our event in the East Midlands. Today, it would have been the first day of the Stroke Assembly Conference. We're really sad not to be able to see you all face to face, but we are so happy that you continue to come back and join us here virtually for our webinar series. So stay with us. Today, we're talking about intimacy and relationships with Doug. We'll come on to that in a moment. But before we do, we want to hear from you. As always, please introduce yourselves in the chat box. Say hi to others and put your questions to today's speakers. We have Natalie with us as always to take your questions and comments. Good morning, Natalie. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's session. Um, as always, if you do have any comments and questions that you would like to share, please do use our chat box. You'll be able to find this on the right hand side of your screen. And if you scroll down right to the bottom, you'll be able to use the text bar to put your comments and questions in and submit using the little arrow key. Um, due to today's um, session and its sensitivity, if you do want to write comments, you are able to be anonymous. If you sign into our chat box using our guest option, you'll be able to put any name or number in there that you'd like to submit your questions. I look forward to reading those throughout. Thanks, Natalie. So yeah, we do look forward to hearing what you've got to say today. We also really want to hear from you about these sessions. Your feedback is so important to us. We will be bringing the Stroke Assembly back in September for another round of webinars, especially for you. So tell us what you think. We'll post a link in the chat box shortly where you can provide your feedback on how the session, sessions run for you, the topics you'd like to hear from in the future. It's really important. These sessions are designed for you and we want to hear from you. So thank you. So on to today's session, as I mentioned, we've got Doug with us today. who's going to be talking about intimacy and relationships. I'll hand over to Doug now. Enjoy the session and I'll see you in a moment. Hi, everybody. Thanks, Tony. Um, so I'm Doug. Uh, I'm a trainer with the Stroke Association and uh, I train our staff who provide support to people affected by stroke. Um, before I did this role, I worked as a counsellor uh, supporting people affected by um, stroke and brain injury, um, both individuals and couples. And um, I've also worked on our helpline at the Stroke Association. Um, and I'm really interested in those topics that um, often people seem not to talk about very much, but which can make a, a really big difference to our lives. Um, so one of the, the topics that I cover in training is sex and intimacy after a stroke. Um, and a lot of people uh, who've been affected by stroke have the experience that no one talks to them about sex. Um, and I think for that reason alone, it's a, a really important topic to talk about. Um, but today we're going to be uh, talking about intimacy in a really broad sense. Um, so you can think about the ideas that we talk about today in terms of uh, sex and physical intimacy, um, but in terms of other types of intimacy as well. Um, so sometimes when we see the word intimacy, we might think of that as a, a euphemism for sex. But um, to you, intimacy might be um, reading to your partner, uh, telling your friend how much they mean to you, um, or just being able to sit quietly with someone together. So um, as um, uh, Natalie said, please um, do share questions in the chat panel throughout. Um, we're going to share my details at the end, so if there are any questions that you don't want to ask in this session, you're welcome to uh, contact me with those. So why are we talking about intimacy and relationships then? So relationships are really central to all of our lives, whether that's our relationship with our partner, 
our children, our parents or friends, maybe with our cat. Um, it may be that you're you're coming to this session um, with somebody who you're in a relationship with. It may be that you're um, by yourself and that's okay. Um, so when everything's great with our relationships, we tend to feel loved, supported and connected. Um, but sometimes it can be really hard for all of us to balance being a partner um, with being a parent, uh, perhaps being a carer, um, with having a job and taking time for ourselves as well. Um, so this quote from a carer highlights that after a massive life event like a stroke, um, there's a huge amount to think about and we might not feel that able to focus on our relationships very much. Uh, but our, our lived experience of stroke report highlights that this is a really significant issue for lots of people affected by stroke. And we know that stroke doesn't just affect the person that's had the stroke, um, but everyone who's connected to that person as well. So we might feel like we have to be carers first and partners second, and we can recognise this in Stuart's experience here. And also stroke has a huge emotional impact, which can put extra pressure on relationships. So Dave talks here about um, feeling more grumpy with his wife and stroke can change behavior and emotions. Um, and it might be especially hard right now to feel connected to people when we're living through this period of change and uncertainty, and that's bound to impact all of our relationships. We might be missing our usual ways of getting support, perhaps, or feeling quite isolated. So if you recognise some of these experiences, then you're not alone. Um, sometimes we might imagine that we're the only ones feeling a certain way, um, but it's really reassuring to know that there are other people here in the same boat as us. And what I'd like you to get out of today is two things. So firstly, uh, some ideas that can help our relationships to thrive which I'm going to share with you. Um, a secondly, just a chance to pause for a few moments out of our day and just give ourselves some time to reflect on what's important to us in our relationships. Um, and at the end of the session, I'm going to uh, give everybody an intimacy challenge. So that doesn't have to be um, anything that's gonna take loads of time and energy. It can be something that's gonna feel achievable for you at the moment. Okay, so on to the first of our ideas, and um, this is the, the three C's, and it's from um, the charity Relate, um, who uh, provide lots of relationship advice and counselling, um, and I quite like it because I find three things quite easy to remember. Uh, so our first C is um, communication, um, and for a lot of people, um, stroke can affect communication, which can make it really difficult to express how we feel and what we need in relationships. Um, and there's a lot of guidance around that and everybody's situation is a bit different. Um, but I think it's also important to acknowledge that even without the effects of stroke, we can often misunderstand each other. Um, and that's because we all bring our unique perspectives to relationships. And those are shaped by our experiences throughout our lives. Um, and often we might not really be that aware of um, the, the assumptions that we're making in relationships. We tend to think that other people think the same way that we do um, until it becomes clear that they don't. And that's where problems might come up. Um, so an example of this might be where someone thinks that their partner is ignoring them but their partner's trying really hard to give them some space. So often it's, it can be really helpful just to pause and ask ourselves what, um, what assumptions or evaluations we might be making and check that out with the other person. And um, if we can use um, lots of I language, so I feel, I would like it if, that owns what we're saying and avoids putting blame on that other person. So particularly if we're, uh, we're having difficulties 
um, then that can make things feel safe and enable both people to share how they feel and what they need. Uh, so that's uh, communication. The next C is compromise. And it's really important to say that this isn't the same thing as giving up. Um, but it can help if we're stuck with a particular problem, just to um, think about it a bit flexibly and think um, if there's anything that we could do now um, just to move forward a little bit with that. So um, I'll give you an example of this. Um, my partner and I sometimes struggle to find films that we both want to watch. So I quite like a gritty drama. She quite likes a comedy. Um, but that doesn't mean that we have to choose something that neither of us are going to enjoy. What we might say is, um, OK, you could choose the film on Wednesdays and I'll choose it on Fridays. So compromise isn't always 50-50. Um, it might be 70-30, but with the expectation that over the course of that relationship, that's going to level out. And the final C, and the one that I wanted us to focus on today, is connection. Um, and this is where we talk about intimacy. So intimacy and connection go hand in hand. So connection is what gives us those warm, fuzzy feelings about people. And it's the reason that these relationships are important to us. Um, and increasing connection can um, often be surprisingly quite practical. So if we're struggling in a relationship, we might assume that communication is the issue and try to communicate quite a lot. But if we um, instead focus on doing something, that creates that sense of connection. So maybe sharing a project or an activity together, um, then communication can flow quite naturally from that. So a really key question we can ask ourselves is what creates that sense of connection for us and what makes us feel connected. So I'm going to invite everybody just to take a few moments to think about this now through a visualization activity. So we're going to use our imaginations for this. And um, you're very welcome to take part in whichever parts of this you, you like. Um, you might find that um, thoughts and feelings come up for you during the activity. Um, you might also find that nothing much comes up and you find it quite difficult to, to get into. Um, both of those are OK. Um, it's very individual. So um, what I'll, I'll do first of all is just invite everybody to sit comfortably. We don't need to be in any special position for this, just however you're comfortable. And you can gently close your eyes if you like or just let them rest on a point in front of you. And we'll just start by taking a couple of deep breaths just to ground ourselves. So just breathing in slowly and then breathing out all the way. And then I'll just invite you to think of somebody who's special for you and picture them in your mind's eye. So it might be your intimate partner or a friend, anyone who you have that sense of connection with. It might be someone who's in the room with you now or someone who isn't. When you have an image of that person, just bring to mind a time when you've been together. So it could be the first time that you met or a special time that you've shared.
And the invitation is just to use all of your senses to fill out that memory. So see what you can see in your mind's eye and hear in your mind's ear. And anything else that you can smell or taste or touch. And just see what you notice about that person as you picture them in that scenario. What qualities do they have? And what is it about them that you really value love and admire. Maybe see if you, you notice them saying or doing anything in that situation. And then in your own time, just slowly come back to the room. You can open your eyes if you've closed your eyes. And have a stretch, grab a, a sip of tea or coffee if you like. Okay, so I hope we're, we're getting a sense of what that connection is like from that activity. Um, and if anyone would like to uh, share any thoughts on this question on the slides, what makes us feel connected? Or anything else that came up for you during that exercise, it'd be really great to hear that. Um, but please only share what you feel comfortable with. Natalie will um, share your thoughts with the group. Um, so I think we'll, we'll just pause for a moment there to um, give people a chance to think about that and comment. If nothing's coming through, that's okay. We can um, move on to the next section to give ourselves some more thinking time. Hi, Doug. Um, I'll just read a few things that have come into the chat box, if that's okay. Um, Perfect, thanks. So I've got a few questions and comments to share with you. Um, one in particular says, uh, what key resources would you give to professionals to share with stroke survivors? So is there any content that you would um, suggest at the moment? Oh, yeah, that's... Um... That's a good question. Um, so, yeah, I mean, certainly any of the um, the Stroke Association resources, um, like our fact sheet on um, on sex and relationships, or, or emotional changes after a stroke, those are, are really useful. Um, we're we're going to share some uh, some links with you at the end of the session. One of those is. Um, uh, relate and they've got some um, good videos out at the moment um, about relationships during lockdown and managing those um, so those are, are definitely worth a watch um, I'm sure there are more uh, but those are the main ones I can think of at the moment Thank you. Um, and we'll share those links um, during the session for you as well in the chat box. Um, I have more of a comment here and I don't know if we can give um, Jacqueline some advice. So she says, my husband seems bored of my stroke now, saying things like pull yourself together and you're playing on it now. So I'm not sure, Doug, if you've got any advice uh, that we might be able to, to provide. Mm. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, that sounds like a, a really tough situation. Um, I mean, I, I I wouldn't like to give specific advice in in that situation because I'm I'm not sure of of you know everything that's that's going on. But um, I would say um, that when when things are that tough, I guess intimacy might be the last thing on our minds, um, and and that's okay. So we can really um, kind of take our time 
with that and um, you know give ourselves some some space to think about you know what we need in our relationship um, kind of maybe building up that um, that trust and um, a mutual respect um, and also um, perhaps to get some support with that um, so uh, you know strokes extremely hard um, being a carer is extremely hard and we're in a, a really difficult situation with coronavirus as well so um, I would say check out our local stroke support services um, contact our helpline and talk about kind of what's what kind of support might be available in your area because um, yeah it isn't something that um, I'd want anybody to to be going through um, by themselves so I hope Thank that you. helps Thank you. And thank you, Jacqueline, for sharing your comments today. Um, we understand this is a sensitive comment, uh, topic, so thank you for sharing those with us. Um, I just have one more question for you at the moment, um, Doug, if that's OK. And it's around, um, do you think people have found relationships harder during lockdown? Oh, um, yeah, that's that's really interesting. Um, I, I think um, some people certainly have. Um, I mean, based on um, on figures, kind of such as you know, increased uh, visits to to the Relate website and increased use of their services. Um, but I think you know, sometimes it can go the other way. It's, it's worth mentioning that as well. That um, I mean, whilst we never um, probably when we we um, formed relationships, pictured spending a um, hundred plus days in a house with that person. Um, actually, uh, if if people have come through that and and use that as an opportunity to connect, then it might strengthen relationships as well. So I think it can go both ways. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. Um, and there's a few more comments just relating to what Jacqueline put before, um, mm. saying I have um, a similar problem with my wife. She cares about my recovery, but every once in in a while, she says something like I'm I'm being ill or, or I'm playing on on being ill. So some similar comments um, to what Jacqueline shared before. Mm. Um, mm. At the moment, so I think your advice about seeing what, how we can support you and maybe having conversations with our helpline uh, may support there as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, thank you for everyone who shared your comments so far and please do keep sharing as we'd love to share those and, and maybe provide support if where we can. Um, so thank you. Great. Thanks, Natalie. So, yeah, and we'll have have more space for questions at the end. So keep those coming in. Um, OK, so it might be that um, a lot of the um, the things that we thought of um, when we did that um, previous exercise um, overlapped, um, but it might be that there's some things that really create that sense of connection for some some of us um, but for other others of us don't um, and that's quite common and we can see that even within our closest relationships sometimes it can feel like we're not not quite on the same page um, so here's another list to share with you um, this is from uh, a counselor called Gary Chapman and it's a really popular approach to thinking about our needs in relationships um, and you can do a quiz online to find out what your um, preferred love language or languages are um, we'll share that link with you at the end um, so in no particular order um, we'll we'll look at these so we've got words of affirmation um, it might be really important to you that people that you care about um, say things like you're really good at cheering me up or you look great today or acts of service um, might help us to feel connected so when someone takes the bins out um, or takes our car for its MOT um, things that we might not necessarily think of as acts of love um, but for some of us those can really increase that connection uh, we might really value receiving gifts of any kind uh, or we might value quality time so spending time together talking just enjoying each other's company um, and then last but not least um, physical touch so that might be um, a hug holding hands or being sexual might help us to feel loved. Um, so some of the, the ideas that we think of around connection might um, come up here um, and others may not. 
Um, it's an interesting and fun way to um, think about our relationships. Um, and quite often, um, thinking about couples particularly, our preferences um, won't match for this, um, and that's that's in no way a problem. Um, but it might be um, interesting and useful to to know what your preferences are, um, to use that knowledge just to to flex a bit about how we express that intimacy and connection. So that's the five love languages. Um, just a, a recap and uh, sharing a couple of links. So we've looked at the three C's, focusing particularly on connection and those five love languages. Um, and just to say that it might be that because of lockdown or because of the effects of stroke, we're not able to express intimacy and connection in some of the ways that we're used to. Um, however, intimacy can be expressed in so many different ways and all of these are really meaningful. So the last thing that I'm going to ask you to do is just to think of one thing that you can do in the next week to connect with somebody. Um, and as I said before, um, it doesn't have to be anything that's going to take loads of time and energy. Um, we might need to, to think a bit creatively about something that we can do to uh, to create that connection and you don't have to tell us what it is um, but if you you're able to to write it down that might be helpful and that's everything that I had to um, to share with you today folks so um, just to say thanks for for listening and um, and as I said we've got some more time for questions and comments now Doug, thanks so much for taking us through that presentation. We can see it's been a really important topic for people in the chat box and some, some important comments. Um, Natalie, I, I don't know if there's anything else you want to share at this stage from the chat box. Um, just a few more comments coming in. Um, again, I think a lot of support around partners understanding um, a lot more around people's stroke experiences and uh, I think going back to what Doug said before around maybe finding support uh, within our organisation um, might be uh, something that we can uh, signpost people to so I'll post a few links to our helpline um, and that's on the screen now as well for you for the number um, if people would like further support around um, this topic. I will just share a comment that Roger has put which he said I found sharing time with other stroke survivors helpful and um, this helped me to reconnect with uh, intimacy and become less self-centered um, so that's a nice comment from Roger basically I think um, sort of encouraging us to spend more time with people in similar situations which mm. I guess um, Doug uh, you might be able to jump in there with anything uh, yeah absolutely just yeah just say yeah thanks for, for sharing Roger that's um, that's a really good idea and um, uh, it, it might be um, you know, we don't necessarily need to, to, to do anything big. It's, it's just making that time and time to, to be together and that connection um, can flow quite naturally from that. So, thank you. Thank you, Doug. Um, I think that's all the comments we've got in at the moment, but please, if you would like to share um, any questions or if you have any questions for Doug or any of the team, um, then please do pop in our, in our chat box as well. Thanks, Natalie. Doug, maybe one final question for me, if that's okay. Great. Um, why, why do people find this topic so difficult to talk about? Yeah, that's that's an interesting question. Um, I, I think, um, I mean, with the topic of sex in particular, um, often people find that it isn't talked about. And I mean, that's because it can feel like an awkward topic to talk about, um, but also because um, it's, uh, it sort of doesn't feel like anybody's role um, to to speak about that. So people are sometimes left um, kind of not not knowing who to address those questions to, and that can mean that people are um, are by themselves with some of these issues mm. for for quite a long time. Um, but um, kind of I've, I've spoken to people who. You know they've they've taken that step themselves to ask those questions and it's it's been really life-changing um so i mean i would say um 
if if you can do that, speaking to anybody that you you feel comfortable speaking to, if you've got questions or or worries about that. Um, also, and um, kind of in relationships, it's um, things can can just feel difficult to talk about. Um, you know, things might feel um, uh, quite quite scary or threatening to us sometimes. So if we can use the, that I language and own what we're saying, um, that can help. But um, also um, getting some support from um, from a counsellor, online counselling session, if that's um, an option for you, can be helpful just to create that, that space of safety where we can have those conversations. Thank you, Doug. Um, I can see how important of a topic this has been for people today. Um, some of you may not have wanted to share in the chat box. And I know Doug has very kindly offered up his email address. We'll put that up on screen again in a moment and we'll also post it in the chat box. Doug, we're really grateful for you You're being part of the Stroke Assembly today. And I know you will be open to people contacting you should they want to speak to you more. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you for, for inviting me and thanks for all your, your questions and comments. Thanks, Doug. Take care. So that's all we've got time for today. Um, we've got plenty more to come this week with the Stroke Assembly online. On Wednesday, you can join us for Getting Online with Aphasia, um, a great session for anybody, in fact, aphasia or not, um, if you want to think about how you can get online and access technology a little bit easier. And then on Friday, we're really excited about this session. We have a panel session made up of many different people who are experiencing different things during lockdown. And we're talking about how we can keep connected with each other. There'll be some tips, some sharing of personal stories. And we'll also begin to think about as lockdown restrictions are loosened, what does that mean for people affected by stroke? Uh, we know many people still feel vulnerable and anxious about going outside into the big wide world. And we'll talk about that on Friday at 11 o'clock. Really enjoyed being with you all this morning. We'll put up the helpline number again because we know um, that may be something that you may want to, to take access of as well. But for now, we'll see you on Wednesday. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.